All right guys, we're out here looking for catfish and we've already got one. Let's see how many we can get. We're gonna turn these into a meal, cook them on the fire. These guys are sharp spine, both sides here. And they got one up here on the top. You get stung with those. Oh, and it hurts. Catch and cook catfish on a sandstone oven. Join me. Woo. Learn anything, Huck? A lot of people have asked me on the channel how I wash my hands. So I, I already do, I already wash my hands, but this is more for demonstration purposes only. But you can obviously take my advice. I've been doing it for years. So the idea is, you know, I just cut up some rotting maggot-covered liver for the bait. Uh, we've retossed all them back out. Uh, trying to get another alligator gar if we can, or catfish or turtle, whatever happens to come by. So my hands actually don't smell at all now, and that meat is disgusting. Like you would probably get sick if you ate off of it. So all I do is grab in the water whatever I can find. Here it happens to be mud. So I just wash my hands with mud. This is kind of clay, and but every even clay has fine grains which is probably how they came up with the idea of putting those little you know the loofah balls if they're scrubbers and then they put little plastic pellets now in soap which are polluting the entire environment by uh, ending up in the ocean and then the fish end up eating them even by accident sometimes on purpose filling up their gut cavity and causing all sorts of problems so if you just do something like that you don't need soap or anything Scrub your hands. Um, if you have soil or gravel or you're just on a rock, I mean, there's almost no situation where you can't find a suitable scrubber in, in the environment. You don't have to get moss or anything weird. Just get whatever's there, whatever's on the shore, beach sand. You know, that works really well. That scrubbing action will remove any toxins from your hands. Now, because you just put your hands in the lake, there's a chance that if you eat immediately, you can get, you know, some unhealthy bacteria from the water. But if you just, once you're done, have a quick smell, trust your nose. Your smell tells you lots of things about what the bacteria levels are in certain things. You know, you can scratch all that dirt off your fingers. This is actually the first time during the Wilderness Living series in Texas here where I have actually managed to have enough time to clean under my fingernails. So, smell test, all good. Hands clean. And uh, all I would do now is dry, let them air dry. That'll kill a lot of the pathogens that happen to be in the water. And I've never been, I've never gotten a, a sickness or illness from the water in that way. You can go up to the fire next if you have one and just bake your hands a little bit dry. And that's gonna kill a good percentage of the bacteria enough to keep you out of the hospital. So that's just a quick tip on how to wash your hands. Dude, how's your hands, man? Check that out. That is tender. When you're opening up that alligator gar when you're sitting there levering that big bowie knife up and you catch the, the edge of that skin, that armor plating, it just shreds your hands. So uh, next time, take a moment, put some gloves on, cause I'm feeling it. Couple rod holders, Bob? Yep. You don't like lose your big expensive rods? Not at all. Have you ever lost one? No, but I've been with people that have. <laughs> yeah. That's gotta be a heartbreaker, those rods look expensive. Yeah, there's a, I don't know if you saw the collection of them there in the barn. All those are busted in half. They're just, uh, it's <laughs> you just broke a, them? it's a graveyard of, of things. So I haven't lost any rods, but things snap them in half. And that's an ugly stick, so gives you an idea what we're dealing with. I said early on, I used that 300 plus pound Catahoula line. And there's been a couple instances where I come back and it's not the line or the hook that's gone, it's the tree. 
<laughs> so one of these days I'm just gonna have to figure out what it is because uh, we got 13 14 foot crocodiles coming through here uh, alligators and uh, yeah you never know That'll do it. For bait, all we're using is deer heart, deer liver. So this one's an old one. You can see all the blood's washed out of it. We want to put the fresh ones on. That'll draw them in. Use these big circle hooks. Just throw a couple loops through once, once to hold it, twice for insurance, three times for luck. We have three hooks on each, sometimes four. Oh, it's just a little guy. There you go. All right, guys, we got a red-eared slider here. We ate this guy on the Wilderness Living Challenge, but we're, well, his lucky day, we're not going to eat him. We're looking for something else today, something bigger. So that'd be a good side snack. But uh, like I said, we want we want something big. We want an alligator gar, something bigger than that. Pretty cool little animal. We're fishing the San Antonio River in Texas. And it's bigger than that out here. Let's go throw them back in the drink. Lucky turtle. Come on, bud. Not nearly as fast as a redder, or uh, not nearly as fast as a soft shell. Come on, bud. It's a catch and release turtle. You only do that around here. Certainly not in Canada. <laughs> nope. I've never caught a turtle on a line before. I'm sure you could, but not legally. Not anymore. Okay, let's, let's swap sides with you, brother. Oh, it's a gar. No, what is that? It's a little foot flash, so I'm thinking catfish? Could be a cat. Got the gas just in case. Okay, we're just about to shore here. I'm gonna back up, yeah? yeah. You want it in your hand? It's just a little guy. Little cat. Little cat. Little cat. Yes, sir. Here we go. That's a meal. That's a meal, that's a meal. There we go. Little cat. Good fish, man. Yeah, good that's job. a that's a good eater. I love to eat those guys. We want a monster though. But I'll eat, I'll eat that guy all day long. Alright guys, we just landed this. Put up a good fight. Not a big one, but it's a good place to start. We just set out our lines. We're going to see what we can get. But the idea today is we're going to catch a bunch of fish throw them on the coals and have ourselves a meal. This stuff in here, it's like last year's weed stock. It makes really great tinder. You can find it anywhere. We're just gonna grab a bunch of this. This stuff is really dry. Old flower heads. Grab a bunch of this. There we go. Alright, that's a good start. Alright guys, I'm back here on uh, Bob Hanser's property and he's got 
the best rock oven probably on YouTube. I would have to agree. It's designed on a system where you feed fire down below and the, the flame will come up and the heat will come up and it'll actually cook right on this surface here. So we've got our catfish. It's almost hot enough. I could just throw it on top and bake it in the sun, but it might not get all the way through and the flies will get it in the meantime. So let's do it properly. Let's use this rock oven to its fullest potential. Let's load it up and get this guy cooking because I'm hungry. I'm gonna go grab some mesquite up on the hill. That's a really hard wood. It burns really hot and makes nice coals. You can tell this stuff's mesquite because on the inside, it's red and it's super dense. This stuff sells for a lot of money as smoker for smoking meats and stuff like that. It's a really high quality wood and uh, I'm gonna get a really excellent tasting catfish out of the deal. That stuff's hard, man. Whew. Oh, that's getting hot. Okay, we're ready. Let's get our fish. So this fish is going right on the rocks. Look at that mug. Hello, how are you? Fish got a big gash out of it. Probably from a big gar pike. The amount of heat coming out of here is intense. Got a good bake on. That sun is scorching hot and the heat coming out of here. It's gonna take no time to cook that catfish. Alright man, that looks done. As soon as that skin starts to fall off, you know that meat's finished. Beauty. Alright guys, that sun's intense. I gotta find some shade to eat this under. Whew, that catfish is hot even with the gloves on. In Texas, shade is your friend. You can burn easily out here. Especially as a Canadian. Alright, this is a good spot here. Let's kick some of the brush out of the way. Alright. Quick look around for rattlers. Wouldn't want to sit on a fire ant nest either. Just gotta grab something to put the catfish on. 
All right. Just grab these gloves again. Grab the catfish. Catfish is smoking hot. Just like it is out here. Ooh. All right. I gotta give credit to Bob for teaching me the technique of keeping the skin on the catfish. He, uh, we'll get rid of these spines here. We don't want those guys anymore. He taught me uh, that you don't have to take the skin off at all. It affects the taste, not at all. Um, you know, the, the skin peels off. I've eaten the skin, it's good. Uh, in this case, I'll get rid of it because it's been on the sandstone. And it's picking up a little bit of the uh, dirt and rocks and stuff. Have a taste. Oh man, that's good. Just melt in your mouth. Just perfectly done. Oh, that's really good. You can see with the skin on, it's not hard to just peel it back. If you don't want it, you can discard it. But uh, it's perfectly edible. It's got tons of fat in it. If I was doing my survival challenge, I would 100% eat it. Uh, it tastes just fine. Just right now it's full of sand, so I don't want to mess up my teeth too much. Anybody who tells you catfish is no good doesn't have any idea what they're talking about. Catfish is fantastic. It's a really good high fatty meat. In survival, I would recommend it for sure. It's uh, easy to catch, relatively easy to catch if you have bait. All right guys, that's it. Uh, just a little short catch and cook. Uh, we caught a turtle, that was pretty cool. Not something I can do back home. It's a new experience for me here being in Texas, stringing together a bunch of catch and cooks here. After the Wilderness Living Challenge, if you guys haven't watched the Wilderness Living Challenge, it's a whole series where we ate nothing but foods from the wild. I hope you'll continue watching me as I learn new techniques to live off the land and exploit new resources including catfish until next time guys you can subscribe or not i don't care cheers oh this is good meat i gotta say thanks to brian jenkins he sent me some adobo spice all the way from around the world and I'm going to use that to spice up my catfish. And I got to say it's pretty good spice buddy. Thank you. Really appreciate it. It even says adobo on it. Hey guys, I'm back in Canada and I've been doing a pile of editing. I want to keep this video series rolling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release a video every Tuesday and every Friday. This is gonna be going on for about two and a half months. I have 19 episodes in total. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is support the channel. What I want you to do, if you can, is please watch the video entirely from the beginning right to the end. YouTube is tracking all sorts of uh, data in their algorithm and what they wanna see is a high watch time or retention time. So if you guys can do that, you like the series, you want me to continue doing that, that's one small way you guys can help. Leave lots of comments down on the bottom, not just one, but a bunch of them, that helps. Of course hitting the like button is super easy you can do that too and sharing it if everybody shared it to five people it would get big really fast and lastly if you want to support it monetarily you can buy a t-shirt i'm hoping to get some more t-shirts up if the t-shirts are available i'll provide a link if not you can always offer a paypal donation that will come directly through me to me you can also hit the sponsorship button that's a new uh, feature that youtube has added you click sponsor and it's a monthly uh, subscription. So they'll, I think it's $5.95 or something like that. And uh, ongoing supports the channel. So guys, I hope you enjoy the series. Um, if you guys want me to continue doing this, you want me to go to other different places, uh, let me know. If you have access to land, um, you know, private land, and there's a lot of hunting, fishing, opportunities, trapping, that sort of things, and you want to invite me up and a guest or a couple, a couple guests, let me know. Shoot me an email for that. I do not always get to all the comments to do my best, but if it's, a, uh, if it's an important thing like, hey, you want to uh, hook me up with some land and you've got it ready to go, let me know. So uh, I'd like to explore and open different doors and avenues and see where this, uh, this YouTube thing and the survival wilderness living thing takes me. So I would definitely let, welcome some, uh, some offers of getting into new lands all over the world. 
So let me know.